Welcome back Airbnb family. Today, I'm going to teach you how to talk a landlord into letting you use their property to post on Airbnb so you can expand your rental arbitrage business. Let's get into it. No time for me. I've been flying from town to town. All right, so as you all know, I've got about 21 properties active on Airbnb and I'm expanding 10 more in Dallas uh, this next week. So this is what I do for a living, kind of. It's one of my businesses, but I'm very successful at it. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the two layouts and we're gonna focus on the first layout. So the first layout is if you have a single family homeowner, a landlord who's got a few properties, maybe he's got an eight unit complex that he owns, like a multi-unit property, and you're dealing with the homeowner or the property owner as the decision maker on whether or not you can have a lease. The second is when you're dealing with larger properties um, that are professionally managed. Um, you're not talking to the owner as the decision maker. There's, of course, different levels of management. You're gonna to talk to somebody else who doesn't have their ego in the game when negotiating for those larger properties. So the first one is the one that can be a little bit more difficult because obviously every landlord is different, right? So you're gonna to have to find a way to sell these people. So um, first, it's good to put a presentation together. It's good to have a pitch, right? So um, I know a lot of you have asked for me to design a cold call script for you but it really isn't just that simple. I can give you cold call guidelines, um, kind of a layout to follow, but giving you a verbatim script, landlords will tell that you're not being authentic and you are going to ruin that relationship. And it's the relationship that's going to allow you to grow your business, not some little script. So let's talk about guidelines, okay? So first, you need to understand that every homeowner has spent years and years and years buying their property. They may be offended at the idea that you want to come in and make rent on top of their rent when they worked so hard to get the building and you're just going to do it so effortlessly. So you need to be sensitive to the fact that some people, this, this is all that they've got is a couple of homes and this is not just some easy thing for them, okay? Know that. Second, we're going to target homeowners that are not having a lot of success renting out their properties because they're more open-minded because they need the money. For example, um, you can find out if a building has been on the market for rent for more than 60 days from some different uh, sites like Zillow.com, I believe, shows you how many days it's been listed. And um, maybe even HAR does. There's a couple other rental websites. And then, of course, if you're keeping track of things that you find on Craigslist, for example, and you can see that that same listing has been posted for a while, you obviously know that the person isn't getting a tenant. So. Um, which brings me to my next point is know where to find your properties. So Craigslist is a great one because you're going to see people posting on Craigslist. If they're willing to find a Craigslist tenant, they're much more likely to be cool with finding a professional um, Airbnb host because obviously Craigslist is a pretty shady place to find tenants. We all know that. We still use it, don't we? So. Um, of course, you can then use Zillow HAR. You can talk to other real estate agents who might be able to help you find landlords that are open-minded. Because remember, real estate agents have relationships with these people. Real estate agents may become your best friend in your search for property. So now what are the positives to hosting somebody else's property? These are things you need to have memorized and internalized so that way when you have a natural, normal conversation, not a scripted conversation, but just a normal one, all this stuff can come out organically. So positives. You may be the last tenant they ever have. The truth is, is if you pick up a property, like a four bedroom house, and you're crushing it, you're never gonna let that property go, right? You're gonna renew that lease 10, 15 years. It is your income property now too. You are gonna take care of that property. So that leads to number two, which is that you're going to take care of the property literally. If anything ever breaks, the washer, um, baseboards, anything at all, you're gonna jump to get that fixed because obviously Airbnb guests will be upset if the photos don't match the place, right? So you're not gonna let your Airbnb property degrade because that's gonna be bad for your future business. So that's another thing is you're professionally managing, actively managing this property and you're gonna put your heart into this and really care for the quality of their place. A lot of tenants, when a cabinet breaks, they just let it go. They'll live in the property for a couple of years, never talk about the things that are broken and when the person finally moves out, the landlord is stuck with a bunch of surprises. Now he's gotta fix all these things before he can have another tenant come in and that is not what a landlord wants. That's downtime, it's bad for his business, right? So also, that's similar to the third point, which is you're gonna keep the building in for sale condition. That means this building is gonna always be perfectly clean and spotless and when there's, a not, there, when there's not a guest there, everything's gonna look ready for an open house. So the landlord never really has to worry about working with his tenant 
on, on how his property is going to look if he ever decides to sell that property, right? So these are three good reasons. Now, um, additionally, too, is you can offer concessions. Like, you can offer to background check every tenant that comes in if he's going to be or she's going to be a stickler. You can give a little bit of a profit share if you want, maybe a slight premium on rent, things like that. Also, yeah, you can pretty much tell him if this goes well, he can comfortably buy new property and you will pick up the lease right away. So this landlord can expand his or her business using you as a guaranteed tenant. And now you guys can form a partnership. These are great reasons for a landlord to actually work with you. Okay, So you want to internalize those facts so that way when you have those conversations, you're ready. But it has to be organic. It can't be scripted. So um, next, of course, you start cold calling. Um, asking to meet with landlords to make presentations. You know, don't give too much information too quickly. The goal is to build some rapport first and then use that rapport and that open-mindedness that you generate to then give your presentation. So when you call a landlord, say, hi, my name's Sean. Um, I manage a corporate housing company and we're looking to pick up some single family homes for our corporate housing company. Um, I would like to talk to you about your property. Um, I would like to pick up your property for at least a year. Um, and I have some questions for you, and of course I want to uh, give you more information about how my company works. So can I buy you lunch? Can I take you for coffee? Let's talk about it. See how I did this? This is called, kind of like a soft close. I'd like to pitch you, please, in a, uh, in a comfortable, in a mutual area. So don't throw it all out on the phone because they don't know you. Um, they, you, you basically want to show up to this meeting dressed well, well prepared, ready to kind of give information, even a brochure, take some notes. Um, and try to show that you're this open-minded, careful, responsible person because really your, how you present yourself in this meeting will really define whether or not they think that you're like a fly-by-night company, whether or not they think you're truly professional, and um, whether or not they really can imagine doing business with you. A lot of times relationships with people who have a lot of ego in their businesses, this is their baby, they're going to want to see themselves doing business with you. It's a small business thing. So take this. Prepare your pitch, prepare your presentation. You can make a pitch deck if you want to, have it on your phone, just some slides, Microsoft PowerPoint style if you feel like you need to. Um, and try to get some referrals, even if you don't have your own properties, like your own landlords that you work with, try to find another Airbnb host who's successfully working with single family homeowners. And if you need that, put it in the comments and I guarantee you a bunch of the people on this channel will gladly share their referrals with you. Just leave it in the comments, guys. Thank you for watching Airbnb Automated. I will see you on the other side.